What life lesson did you learn that you will never forget and when did you learn it? Substitute Preacher 01 said. Absolutely. I worked with this girl many years ago at a fast food place and she spoke in a very sweet voice but I was too young to see how negative and passive aggressive everything that came out of her mouth was. Metamorphosis said. I'm just saying what everyone thinks. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that but it's the way it's being said that makes the difference. We're all learning in different speeds and have different life experiences and knowledge. Not everyone had parents that would tell you things that are second nature to others, and making you feel bad stupid due to it is not right. Then it leaves a sour aftertaste despite being right, not fun. Bacon Receptacle said. I learned this one as a young man. I was a maintenance supervisor at a resort and every week we had to shut down a floor of each building in the winter time to do repairs and refurbishment on all the condo units. One employee complained that he got stuck with painting all the time so I told him if he was comfortable replacing the hot water heaters that week, he could do the job. So I was focused on all the logistics and normal operations and let him do his thing. The day before everything was to be inspected and put back into service I discovered that the employee had four more water heaters to replace and he had not put all the previous unit's cabinetry back together, the heaters were hidden under the countertop in the kitchen. We had to pay thousands of dollars to a plumbing company to come in and finish the job because there was no way to get it all done in time. My boss in the home office was furious and asked how this happened when we were doing all the other floors on time. I tried to explain that the employee fucked up and didn't tell anyone in time. But my boss explained to me that it's my job to make sure they did their job and not make excuses. I was pissed but after I cooled off, I realized he was right. You can assign tasks and projects to others but ultimately you have to be responsible for the overall outcome. Bikwitbiki said. I was 21 when I learned that just because you've been friends with someone a long time, does not mean you're obligated to stay friends with them forever. If you're at the point where you dread being around them, leave. No amount of history is worth your peace. Queef Stroganoff 44 said. Damn. My best friend from HS was over at my place one night and everyone ate some mushrooms. We were having a good time and suddenly my friend says dude, I'm gay, in a time and place where that was a fairly big deal. I was shocked, but happy for him and glad he could come to terms and trusted me enough to tell me. Then about 20 minutes later he went into crisis mode. Said he was only kidding and was just wondering how I'd react. But he was most definitely serious. I told him it was fine and I wouldn't tell anyone if that's what he wanted. But he insisted he was only kidding. After that every single time we hung out he'd talk about all these girl he had banged since I'd seen him last. How he could look at a girl and know what she's be like in bed. Final straw was when we were in a city hours away from home and we walk into a small bar. And he starts pointing out girls going bin with her. 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 Not yet, but the night's young. Her. Dot. It was too much. He was a cool guy but had some stuff to come to terms with before he could be a good friend. Fast Sheep Herder 4517 said. I used to work at this place and there's this guy I regularly chat with but I wouldn't say he's my friend since we didn't really know each other that well. I mentioned to him at the time that I was planning to travel and wanting to organize it with my friends but nobody wants to come so he decided to invite himself. He's a nice guy and I have nothing against him but I didn't really know him but according to him we're friends, and I didn't know what to say so I agreed that he could come and I thought I should be more open minded. We then traveled overseas and enjoyed the first couple of days then realized that we liked different things and it got to a point that he got angry at me for some unknown reason and started ignoring me during our trip like a child. It was the worst last few days of our trip and was so awkward. Because G said. I used to spend evenings with my grandmother every single day. One day, I was busy with some schoolwork and could not spend the time with her. She passed away that night. It has been 10 years since that day and not a single day has passed when I do not contemplate what would have happened if I just spent some time with her that evening. Since then, I have made it a point to never take people for granted. It could be over before you even realize. Tetronica said. You don't ever truly know another person. Unless you can take up residence in their head, you'll never be privy to their true nature. Learned this through the process of growing up and losing friends' souls. It's not always malicious, sometimes you latch on to the idea of a person rather than who they are. It'll eventually drive you apart as you realize that there is incongruity between who they are and who you think they are. 
Jesms 22 said. Most people's moral integrity isn't nearly as bulletproof as they believe it is. And often, through no fault of their own. We all have certain vulnerabilities that can make us do or say things we had previously thought were below us. Whether it be trauma, desperation, loneliness, etc. Diane Disco 3 said. My dad taught me as a teenager that relationships should be easy. Biggest and best lesson I've ever learned. Relationships should not be filled with drama but with friendship and respect. Really helped me choose who to be with. Now I teach my daughters the same thing so maybe they can prevent being in a painful relationship. Stediast Ocean said. A lot of it is just blueprinting from our parents. Growing up, my parents fought constantly which I must have absorbed subconsciously is how people in relationships relate and show love. Then I got married to my wife who didn't engage when I let emotions fly and took it as a sign she must not care about me. Fortunately through therapy, I was able to work out where that probably came from and realized it was not a thought process I wanted to hang on to as it didn't match who I wanted to be. As you said, it's stressful for both parties and speaking from personal experience, incredibly stressful for children. Just wanted to share a little insight why that might seem like normal behavior to some people though. Kingsider said. It hurts reading your comment. Rings so true. Also, my parents were pretty awkward with one another. I never learned much about love or dating from my parents, which most people actually do in some indirect way. They never flirted in a normal way, afaik haven't had sex for decades now judging by mom's comments and their very distanced interactions, mom falsely accusing dad of cheating on a regular basis. Just other weird behavior and very poor communication when it comes to love. They also went through petty drama pretty often. Like some people they would hang out with would do sth weird and my parents would gossip the shit out of them at home and burn that bridge. Then you visit friends homes, watch movies and TV shows and you see the harsh difference and it hits you like a train. But it is not enough. You know your situation is fucked and hope you can do okay, but you fail miserably. Still have poor social skills. Mostly awful experiences with love and it takes far more work and energy to function normally than it should have. Termashi Inakayomi said. I can relate to you so much. My parents' relationship is so strained and unnatural. They barely resemble a couple. Most of the time they're more like two people who live in the same house but hate each other. It feels like they should have divorced a long time ago, but both of them are too scared and weak to go through with it. It used to make me feel so sad when I would go over to my friends' houses and eat dinner with them. Dinner was so much happier there, and it was so easy to see that their parents actually loved each other. Simonadoyim said. R.I.C., I have sort of a similar situation. My parents had an arranged marriage, they don't really flirt, and I can clearly see that they're not in love, they love each other, but it's like they only love each other cause they kinda had to. Their personalities are completely different, but they've become good friends over the years and very consciously want what's best for each other. It was kinda sad when I realized it, all of my friends' parents who had a love marriage, had such nice stories to look back on, and they gelled so well with each other and communicated so well, let me tell you my parents suck at communication it's really baffling how bad they are at it. What I've learned is, they've somehow come to terms with this and are happy as they can be in this situation. So as long as the peaceful I don't really need to worry too much, and the for a long time I had no advice in the relationships area either, made a ton of mistake, but if somehow learn a lot, from mistakes and other people's mistakes sorta, idk how this helps or if it even does lol. Fudrick the King said. OMG yes. If you're ever worried about telling them something or afraid you'll upset them for just being you, then you're not in a healthy relationship. You shouldn't have to hide anything from them because that's literally what a partner is for, they're supposed to love you and everything that makes you you. Just also keep in mind that compromise does exist because everybody has different ways of doing things, but if they want you to do something that you just can't change about yourself or your routine it's time to move on. Edit, AII I got my first award, obligatory thanks kind stranger. Lemurosity said. Having self-awareness is a huge life skill. Spend a lot of time thinking about who you are now so you can make informed decisions about who you want to be. A lot of people spend a lot of time pretending to be someone they're not, be it because they feel society won't accept the real them or because they don't value themselves. Part of becoming a healthy adult is learning to value who you are now. Be willing to change your ideas about who you want to be, 
This is an important feedback loop as you get life experience. Figuring out if the actions and people in your life are positive in terms of helping you become the person you think you want to be. Not everyone has to move you forward, but you want to avoid meaningful relationships with the people pulling you away from that. Spirito said, When I was in high school, my mom and I took a day to go church shopping in a new part of town. We must have gone to five services that day. Some were fun and lively, some were quiet and reserved. But one in particular really stuck out to me for being so kooky. It was October, and the preacher was starting his sermon to the room of 40 people with Halloween is right around the corner. Who here celebrates Halloween? I was the only person to raise my hand. The preacher goes good. Because Halloween is celebrating the devil, and we don't do that here. At this point, I quickly drop my hand as people give me weird looks. My mom then goes by the way, it's not a good idea to volunteer information to a group of people you don't know. I learned that I need to wait until I understand at least the basic dynamics of a group before sharing anything about myself. In these cases especially, it's better to be quiet and anonymous than to stand out and be a target. We never ended up going back to any of the churches we saw that day, though. Freddie Mew said. I had never heard that particular rhyme before, and while I kinda knew that instinctively after doing it so many times in one form or another, I was getting stuck on something where I had to do it backwards. My friend's younger sister, she was about 9 or 10, I think, said that rhyme offhandedly as she walked by. I was about 20 or so at the time. I've thought about it every time I've turned a screw since, and I've never really messed it up again either. Lesson learned, both the literal one, and don't discount wisdom just because it comes from an unexpected place. Bark for Soul said. This is me. Parents split when I was four, only grew up with my dad's side. Both parents, grandparents all passed before I was 30. I only have one brother and one aunt and we barely speak. I would trade everything I have for a normal family life. I dated an ex when I was like 23 for two years who had a huge family and got together regularly outside of holidays, and it was best thing I've ever been a part of. When we split I was legit said cause her aunts and uncles and the nieces and nephews all eventually stopped talking to me too. For a brief moment I had it. Edit. Jeez guys thanks for the awards. I wish y'all were here to go bowling with or something. Sean Su said. I always get disturbed when I read people stating things like blood is thicker than water, always be there for family, etc. It's not personal, I love my family and would always be there, but I'm well aware that's my situation, not every owns. Some fairly large amount of people would be well served by distancing themselves from family. This assumption on social media that every owns family life was wonderful and to be treasured is just concerning. Edit. Wish I had a dollar for every person who replied telling me the saying was wrong, when literally that's what people say and what they mean. Even if people were saying it's wrong, the whole point is that's what they mean. Kim Abraxas said. I remember a story my dad told me about when he was out with his mates playing pool and a friend of his was really aloof and rude, just generally being more confrontational than usual. At first it pissed him off that he was being a dick but he later found out that this guy had recently turned the same age his own dad was when he died. I guess it was messing him up a bit and was pretty much occupying all his thoughts which didn't leave much room for pleasantries. You have no idea what personal turmoil is going on inside someone else's mind that has nothing to do with you. Red Western said. Don't become a walking charity. When I was in my early to mid 20s. I had a lot of friends who were falling on hard times or needed various types of help. And I was only too happy to help, I had the money, I had the time, I would do anything for them. Not one of them repaid, financially, or otherwise. Instead, I was just taken advantage of, left, right and center. It all ended when I suggested a friend of mine who broke up with their partner and had no place to live come stay with me. Next thing I knew, they were inviting their friends over all the time often without my permission. They weren't contributing a penny to the income of the household. Their new partner soon moved in, and my house basically became a DOS house. And they became a mean-spirited, emotionally abusive asshole who made my life miserable in my own home. Now, I offer advice only. If you need financial support, you can go to the council. If you need housing, you can go to the council. If you want me to provide either of those things, you can bugger off. Metamorphosis said. Also this, 
Work towards being someone you enjoy spending time with. Being your own best friend is an amazing feeling and helps you to realize your own worth. Took a long time to realize this. I got quite a few awesome friends so I'm lucky in that regard, but the most important friendship I have is with myself and it took time to nurture that relationship and start liking myself. Don't get me wrong, I'm still somewhat working on this but I also do kind things to myself and enjoy cooking dinner and having movie nights all by myself. To some it sounds lonely but it's one of the things I value the most once in a while. Helps me to ground myself and just enjoying my own company is a great feeling. Fajid Asbaban Froyo said. Listen to your body. For years, I pushed myself to my physical limits. I went without sleep, skipped meals, stress ate, often had emotional breakdowns, etc. You know what eventually happened? Multiple mental illnesses, emotional disorders, unexplained chronic pain, unexplained neurological failures. My body literally started shutting down to slow me down and force some self-care. It's taken years of prioritizing my health, and I'm still struggling with lesser remainders of those issues. Take it from me. Please, please, please listen to your body. When your body mind is tired, rest. When you're hungry, eat intuitively. When you're stressed, find an effective way to decompress, journal, go on a walk, talk it out with a person you trust, exercise, etc. When you already have too much on your plate, say no. I know it can be easier said than done, but it's a worthwhile investment in yourself. You are worth it. Rhythm said. My mom died suddenly a month ago. I moved four years ago for college but I had a really strong bond with her, talking to her every day and visiting often. She was amazing, always saying how proud she was of me, that she missed me but was so happy I was living my life and was happy. I loved her with all of my heart and every time I was lost or sad I would call her and she would always have solid advice and I love you no matter what to say. I had finished my last college exam on Thursday but decided I wasn't going home that weekend because I just wanted to sleep and relax at home. She called me Friday morning, asking how I was and clearly wanting to chat, but I had so many important things to do I told her we'd talk later. Saturday morning I went out and was out shopping and having a good time. I remembered to call but I thought I'll call her back later today or tomorrow. Saturday afternoon they called me to say her heart had just stopped, and she didn't make it. Make time for the people you love, and for the people who love you. Take out 20 minutes of your day. People always say life can end at every minute but I know realize how sadly true that is. I wish I had talked to her all through Friday and Saturday and gave her all of my time, she deserved it. I love you mom. Neon Style said. I was doing force landing practice in the training area in a Cessna 152 Aerobat with my instructor. On the way back to land, he asked me this question. What will you do, if the engine catches fire? I looked at him, and said jump out. He said, no, you just control the plane, you yaw the plane to get the fire away from the cockpit, and just keep flying. You forget about the fire, and do what is within your control. I looked at him, stunned. And said that's fucking profound Steve. I promptly took that advice and applied it to every aspect of my life. Don't worry about things that are outside your control. Kitchen said. When I was about 9 years old I used to bully a lad in my class. I felt like a tough guy because he was bigger than me. I bullied him because he came from a poor family but I'd always had a wealthy family. Until I was around 9 years old. My dad's alcoholism escalated and cost him his job and destroyed our family. I bullied that lad out of anger because of what I was going through and then one day he beat the shit out of me. Our head teacher, principal, made us sit outside his office for a whole day together, just the two of us. I quickly realized how much I upset him and we became friends. Drew Kreft said. I had a similar situation happen. When I was in elementary school, like 4th and 5th grade. I was constantly bullied on the bus and at school by one kid. I tried to stand up to him a couple times but never got anywhere and just got my ass kicked out. Eventually, I started taking my anger out on another kid and bullied him. Me and my bully got close and he stopped messing with me. After a year or so I realized what I had done and for the rest of my time in school I tried to make up for what I had done to this other kid. We became decent friend and front at point on, even up to now, I find friendships in everyone around me. If they don't like me I just move on instead of hating them or hating myself because of their dislike of me. 
Huge life lesson for me and had really heavily contributed to the person I am today. Cloud Watcher said. Somehow my parents imparted to me life was a pie. If somebody got some, I got less. That if I wasn't doing something impressive or winning at something, I was failing. I thought the way to be valuable and get people to like me was to achieve more, prove how smart I was, and one-up them. You can imagine how that goes over. When people predictably didn't like that, I thought it was because I wasn't achieving enough or seeming smart or talented enough, so I'd get even worse. It's hard to undo such an ingrained mindset and to admit shortcomings and share vulnerability, but the gradual life lesson has been not to try to impress people, not to be ashamed of your true and perfect self, but to listen to people, share with them, and be open, honest, and vulnerable. Edit to add, not a zero-sum game about physical or material things, more like attention and emotional things. My parents certainly never actually literally told me that, either. It's just some weird translation my brain did somehow. SJ4II said. My father was an alcoholic, my mom wanted a divorce and his response was to shoot himself in the stomach, in front of his kids. After that he slowly got worse, to the point we didn't see him for years, he was in prison and never told us. Then when we were in our late teens, he wanted to reconnect, but didn't know what it meant to be a father to older children and treated us like little kids. We struggled to relate to him for a while and then my uncle called me one day, I was 23, to tell me that he died in his sleep from alcohol withdrawal in a halfway house. I think movies, TV shows and books, and religion, makes it seem bad to not forgive someone, but I can't forgive him. The suicidal attempts, the lack of contact, the alcoholism, it was too much. But what movies don't tell you is this, it's okay to feel that way. It's okay to feel conflicted and unsure of how you feel. Life goes on, that doesn't mean you didn't love them, it just can't be wrapped up in a neat bow. I think it was important for me to realize that.